Welcome. In this short video, we're going to provide a brief introduction to a feature called shared events in Roots Magic. Now, a shared event is basically an event. Okay, and as you know, you can go and add any number of events to a person, such as birth, marriage, death, and burial. But one of the great things that you can do with these events in Roots Magic is share them with other people in the same file. Now, this is particularly useful for things like a census or a residence where more than one person in the file actually use that same fact or that same event. Uh, so, for example, you might add a census event to the head of a household and then instead of having to go into his spouse and then into the edit screen for each of his five children and add that exact same information each time, you could just simply add that census event to the head of the household and then share that fact or that event with those other people so that they're all sharing the exact same piece of information. One, you don't have to keep typing it in over and over. And two, if you need to change it, you can, once you've changed it, it changes for everybody because it's a shared event. So let's go ahead and kind of give you an idea of how this might work. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a census event or a census fact to James Smith here. And when I do that, it's going to ask me for the date. So let's go ahead and say <clears throat> this was the 1870 uh, census and it was in Avon, Polk County, Iowa. And I could do any of that in my regular old event thing. So I could say this is an event note and I could add a, add sources to the to the census event. I could add media. I could do any of those things that I would normally do with an event. Let's go ahead and save that. And I now have a census event saved for James Smith. Now I'm going to hop out of here and show you that if I go to his wife, Ruth Ann Mills, she does not have a census event. I, if I wanted her to have a census event, I could do it the old fashioned way and come up here and click add a fact and select census and go through those exact same steps that I just did to add it to her. If I go to their son, Howard, you'll notice he does not have a census event. And again, I could do it the old fashioned way and go in and just add the exact same information and hope I get it right uh, by w when I go in and re-enter that. But I'm going to instead go in back into James and I'm going to select this census event we just added and I'm going to say let's share this fact. I'm going to share it with other people. Now I can add one person, I can share it with one person or I can share it with multiple people at a time. I'm just going to go ahead in this video to show you how to add it for a single person. I'm going to say add a person and Roots Magic says, okay, are you wanting to share this census with somebody that's already in the database or do you want to just type the name of the person and not and share it but not ever add that person to the database? And that could be useful if there's somebody you wanted to share it with but you didn't actually want them in the database. But I'm going to go ahead and say I want to choose the person from the database. It brings up a list of everybody and I'm going to go ahead and select the select his wife, Ruth Ann Mills. That was his wife's name. I'm going to select her and Roots Magic is saying, okay, you are about ready to share this census event with Ruth Ann Mills. Now, there are a couple of other pieces of information that it's also going to want. One is what is Ruth Ann's role in this census? Okay, now every fact type is going to have one built in role called witness. But in this case, Ruth Ann was not really a witness to the census. She was the spouse in the, in the census. And so I'm going to say I want to add a new role type. So I'm going to add this new role type and I'm just going to call it spouse. I could call it wife if I wanted, if I wanted to be more specific. And then Roots Magic wants me to enter a sentence template for this role. Now, we don't really have time to cover how sentence templates work. Um, if you look through the help, uh, you'll, you'll, there's an entire section on how to put together a sentence template, but I'm going to show you a basic template and I'm going to put a field in called this person. Now, anytime you're editing a role, in other words, a, a role that somebody has in a shared event, this person, that field will just be replaced with their name. So in this case, this person is going to end up getting changed to Ruth Mills. Okay, this person appeared in the date and I'm actually going to put date colon plain. And that's so that 
Roots Magic doesn't throw the word in in front of it. So it doesn't say appeared in the in date. Um, and so plain just says just put just the date. Appeared in the date census in place plain. And again, that's just so it doesn't put the word in or of or from or any of those kind of things in front of it. Uh, in the household of person. Now you'll notice there's two different fields we used here. We used this person and we used person. Person is always going to refer to the primary person. In other words, the one we originally added the fact to. Okay, in this case, James Smith, because we went in and we added the census to James Smith. This person is going to be considered the shared person, the person we're sharing it with. So this is actually going to change so that when this gets printed in a book, it's going to say Ruth Mills appeared in the 1870 census in Avon, Iowa, in the household of James Smith. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I could enter a note. I could put um, this is uh, Ruth's note about the census. Okay, so this is specific to her appearing in this census. And I'm going to click OK. And I've now added this or shared this fact with Ruth Ann. So let's go quickly and I'm going to add this also to Howard. That was the son. And you'll notice when I click on the role to select the role, spouse is still there. What that means is when I add a role to a particular fact type and create that sentence template, I don't have to do that every time. Once I add a new role to a fact, it's always there and I can just select it from the list. But in this case, Howard's not the spouse, so we need to add a new role type. And this one's going to be called child. And we're going to do a similar sentence template. We're going to say this person appeared in the date plane census in place plane in the household of person. Now again, as I mentioned before, this person is going to be replaced with Howard Smith, the person that we've created that we're sharing this with and person is going to be again that primary person that we originally uh, added this fact to. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I could put a I could put a note down here if I want I'm just going to go ahead and skip that for now. So I've shared this with two people. Now if there were other children it becomes easy to just go say add a person select that child and then pick that role as child and I don't have to re-enter the sentence template again for that because I've already done it the one time. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now when I look at this census, in addition to the date and the place and the note, down here on share, it's telling me that two people also share this fact. And I can click on that and I can see who those people are. But this is where it gets fun. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go into Ruth Ann's edit screen and but, uh, I didn't actually add a census event to her. I didn't go into her and add a census event. But since I shared it with her, this event now shows for her, including the date, the place, the notes. If there are any sources or media for that event, uh, it will show up there as well. But since it's shared with her, since it wasn't her in there, added originally to her, that's why the word census is not bolded and why it has this little shared symbol as well. Okay, now I'm going to go back into James Smith real quick and show this census. So when I highlight that, Roots Magic is showing me here's what the sentence is going to look like. James Smith appeared in the census in 1870 in Avon, Iowa. Okay, if I go into Ruth Ann and select census, you're going to see it's going to give me a different. Ruth Ann Mills appeared in the 1870 census in Avon, Iowa, in the household of James Smith. That is that sentence template that we created, except it's now being filled out for her uh, in, in, for this particular fact. And again, if I go into Howard, uh, he also now has this same census fact because I shared it with him. And again, I could see all the information, uh, the notes, and I can see Howard Smith appeared in the 1870 census in Avon, Iowa. 
Um, and I actually, I probably should have made that sentence template say appeared as a child in the household of. I didn't, I didn't put that in that sentence template, but that is what I may have wanted to have put appeared in the household or appeared as a child. It's up to you how you word those sentence templates. Okay, but let's say you realize that this date was wrong. Okay, let's say you're you're working with Howard, the child, not the person you originally added it to, but somebody you shared it with, and you realize that this was actually the 1880 census. Well, I'm going to go ahead and change this to the 1880 census, and I'm going to also say this is a modified event note. So I'm going to change the note. I could change sources. I could change whatever from here. Go ahead and save this, close, and when I go back to James, you're going to see on the 1880 census now that it has modified that date and it has changed the event note. That's because these events are truly shared. They're not just copied from James to his wife and James to his son. They're actually shared. So if I make a change to this fact in any of those people that I shared it with, that change is going to be reflected with everybody else. And if I make a change to this fact for James, also, it will be reflected on everybody I've shared it with. Okay, it's, it's a great way of not having to uh, go in and make a change in seven or eight different people for the exact same fact type. Because since it's shared, changing it in one place changes it for everybody else. Okay, so let's just real quickly go. Um, I'm going to hop in here to the... Let's do a narrative report so you can kind of see this real quickly. I'm just going to do a... A descendant narrative just so I can get James, Ruth, and Howard, just those three. And let me shrink this down so that you can actually view it here in this screen. Okay, and so here it is. So James Smith was born, and then here's the sentence, the census that we added. He appeared in the census in 1880 in Avon, Polk County, Iowa. Um, this is a modified event note. There's that note that we had added to it. Okay, well then it goes and talks about the wife, and it says Ruth Ann Mills uh, was born. Okay, here's her census sentence. She appeared in the 1880 census in Avon, Polk County, Iowa, in the household of James Smith. And then this is Ruth's note about the census. So it's letting me have a specific different note than the one that was attached to James's census event. So that's what that little note field lets me do is have a very specialized version. Even though this census event is shared, Ruth can have her own note about that census. And then finally, Howard Smith appeared in the 1880 census in the household of James Smith. And so that is a brief overview of what a shared event is and how to use it.